The original Matrix trilogy was deeply layered, philosophical and a prediction of the next 20 years of society. Yes, The Matrix Resurrections was meta, but it was also the most depressing reflection of society and its future in cinema history. This is why The Matrix Resurrections conveys that humanity has no hope. What's going on Matrix fans, welcome back to the channel, I'm your host The Viking, make sure you give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for a brand new video every single day. Here on the channel we like to explore the Matrix universe, dive a little bit deeper, read theories, articles, books, comics, read about what people think is the Matrix, their perspective. Film for me is subjective, all film is subjective. Doesn't mean it's right, doesn't mean it's wrong, but if an opinion is issued in a respectful way, then it should be listened to in a respectful way. And The Matrix Resurrections for me, yes, very meta, but it also had very deep layers to it. Very much how the original trilogy had that as well. Some people hate the first movie, some people hate the trilogy, some people hate all four, some people love all four, some people love just one. That's what's subjective about film. But it would be very ignorant to ignore the Matrix as a whole in terms of what it predicts. The original trilogy predicted so much about society, our reflection of each other, social media, machines, avatars. It was very accurate. And to think that the Matrix Resurrections will not be accurate 20 years from now, for me is hard to believe. Because, yes you may not like those movies, but you can't disagree and what the films conveyed, and what happened 20 plus years later. The original Matrix trilogy predicted the next 20 plus years of society, our obsession. Society is big on social media. It's what drives the world right now. It's what drives people to be depressed, or to be happy, or to be bored, or somewhere in the middle. We all build avatars for ourselves to convey a perfect self to everybody else. We're trying to impress everybody else. I got 1,000 likes on my Instagram. People must love me. I got 100 swipes on Tinder. People must love me because of the avatar that I've created for them. But is it the real you? We all probably do it. I'm probably doing it right now, making a video, looking for likes, looking for views, Will it make me happy? Probably. But is that the source for my happiness? Personally, I don't think so. But for other people, it is. And that's where the problem lies. Neo, Thomas Anderson, within this new Matrix in the Matrix Resurrections, is depressed. He's living the same day over and over again. He's on his treadmill. He's having his breakfast. He's having his dinner. He's going to work. He doesn't want to be there. He's being told to do something that he doesn't want to do anymore, which is make a fourth Matrix game. How many people in today's society have the same routine every single day and are being told what to do every single day? And this is what wears people down, trying to keep this avatar that we created. Jim Carrey says something like, Depression is basically us breaking down. We're sick of this avatar that we're trying to uphold to society and the world. And it breaks us down. It beats us. It beats us until we can't take it anymore. And we don't want to be this avatar that we created anymore. And we get depressed. And we get sad because we're not healthy enough to do it. But when you break free from that, very much how you break free from the matrix, you find yourself, you awaken, and then you get to decide what's right, what's wrong, what's real, what's not. And that's what I love about the Matrix movies and its reflection to society. So to think that the Matrix Resurrections is not predicting the next 20 years of society, to me, is a little bit ignorant. 
because of what the previous trilogy predicted. And I'm sure people out there will have different opinions on this and that's okay, respectfully, and tell me I'm wrong and that The Matrix Resurrections is a bad movie and it can't predict anything because of how bad it is. And yes, The Matrix Resurrections is a very meta movie. Of course it is. The original trilogy is all over this new movie. But it also had so much more to it in terms of when I talk about predicting the next 20 years of society, it also held up a mirror to the past 20 years. Our obsession with technology, our machines, our avatars, the studios wanting to do sequels, reboots, all that kind of stuff. And it's very accurate. So what am I trying to say here? Is the Matrix Directions predicting the next 20 years of us engaging with robots? Engaging with avatars? Well, we have the meta Facebook world coming very soon. Also, there's actual robots being made to mirror human activity. Yes, it's out there. These robots are actually talking back to people. I'll do a separate video on that. So, the exomorph that we see in the Matrix Directions with Morpheus might not be that far off in terms of society. And you're probably thinking I'm crazy. Or the Matrix of Directions is crazy. But it's actually out there. The groundwork is being built right now. With the meta Facebook. With these robots that are being built. It's actually pretty insane. But another thing that the Matrix Resurrections does. Is it predicts humanity. And what's coming towards humanity. And I'm a very hopeful person. Many people are. We hope that the person we know who is sick gets better. We hope that our kids can go off to college and be okay. We hope that we can win the lottery. We hope a lot in our life. And sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. But we hope. And that's all we have at times is hope for each other and hope for ourselves. But what if I told you that the Matrix of Directions shows that humanity has no hope? We're made to be in this continuous loop, like Morpheus and like Neo War in the Matrix of Directions. This continuous loop of a matrix, where everything is predicted for us, everything is laid out for us, our social media, our Twitter, our Facebook, our Instagram, our YouTube, and we can never escape it. What if I told you that the Matrix of Directions sadly conveys that humanity has no hope? And that is a pretty scary thought, isn't it? I came across a very interesting article, which will be left in the description of this video, that lays out why this may be a prediction of the Matrix Resurrections, or maybe not even a prediction, but actually an accurate storytelling of now, of right now, in the world that we live. This comes from Hindustan Times. Com. What the Matrix Resurrections is telling us, there is no hope for humanity. Lana Wachowski's The Matrix Resurrections combines the ideas of the preceding trilogy and concludes that humans are better off not facing what's real. In 2004 interview, French theorist Jean Baudrillard said, The Matrix is surely the kind of film about the Matrix that the Matrix would have been able to produce. Baudrillard's theories about simulated realities were a key inspiration for the Wachowskis' Matrix trilogy, and yet Baudrillard disapproved of the movies, noting that the Wachowskis missed his point. While the Wachowskis showed that the real and apocalyptic wasteland in the faraway future was clearly distinct from the Matrix, a simulation of the world as it was in the 1990s, Baudrillard had proposed that in the postmodern world, the matrix and reality are indistinguishable and feeding off one another until there is no longer any real. There is only one desert of the real. He suggested that unlike Neo and Gain in the Matrix movies, we will never be able to escape the matrix or let go of it. Our social media versions, our mass media our sense of selves and the world, as we understand it, based on our reflections in the black mirror. Today, we are aware of what the Matrix could be, but we are unwilling to log off. 
Director Lana Wachowski, one half of the Wachowski sisters, takes Balvillard's criticism into account in The Matrix Resurrections and offers a cynical vision of our world. The film's most inventive and storytelling sequence comes early. This time, Neo is a video game developer famous for how he made the Matrix trilogy of games, whose events closely mimic those of the Wachowski's original film trilogy. Like in our world, where the Matrix film trilogy has been highly successful and influential as both spectacle and a reservoir of philosophical ideas that have never been more relevant in the movie, the Matrix games have had the same effect on the population who are living inside a new version of the Matrix themselves. The parent company of the game makers Warner Brothers, the real world producers of the film trilogy, has commissioned Neo to make a fourth Matrix game in a montage cut to Jefferson's airplane's White Rabbit, we see Neo's team break down what made the original games successful. One says it's all about guns and bullet time, the spectacular VFX success in the first film in 1989. Another says it's mind porn, philosophy, and shiny type PVC. Others say Matrix is about trans politics, crypto fascism, and capitalist exploitation. When someone says reboots are uncool, another points out that reboots sell. Meanwhile, a despondent Neo is seen privately struggling to figure out whether this is all there is to reality. It's almost as if this scene shows how the discussions over making the Fort Matrix film played out at the Warner Brothers office. The Matrix trilogy is indeed about the aforementioned things and more, and the Ford film is a reboot come sequel that combines all these elements. Eventually, it turns out Baud Rillard was right. The Matrix games were indeed a scam by the Matrix itself to keep Neo's pre-programmed tendencies and a revolution in check. The most fascinating aspect of the Matrix films is that while the first movie offered a simple good triumphs over evil story, parts two and three subverted the myth of Neo. In the second movie, The Matrix Reloaded, the Matrix architect tells Neo that the machines created Neo as a program to absorb the contradictions within the simulation so as to have human revolutions only help make subsequent versions of the Matrix stronger. Neo in the Matrix trilogy is, in fact, the sixth Neo. In other words, evil, the machines, has created good Neo within the material world as we know it, the Matrix, as a safety valve to control revolutions so that humans continue to provide slave labour. At the end of the first three Matrix films, humans and machines reach a truce. In return of Neo finishing rogue program Smith Hugo Weaving, who was threatening to take the Matrix away from the machines, control to create a world without humans, the machines would spare the humans' real world colony, Psyop. Neo sacrifices himself to destroy Smith, rescues Zeon, and becomes a Jesus like figure. The plugged in humans continue to stay plugged in, those who escape are allowed to live in peace. Taken as an allegory of the war against capitalism, it's a bit like the liberal elite colluding with the capitalistic hegemony to keep the far right and help maintain a state of frictionless exploitation. The fourth film suggests that the Matrix has become stronger than ever because of the lessons learned by the machines from the events of the first three films. Now, mass media and pop culture are how the machines absorb human anxieties and anger and return it as entertainment. In one scene, Bugs, played by Jessica Hemwick, who leads the mission to unplug Neo from the Matrix, tells him as much. They took your story, something that meant so much to people like me and turned it into something trivial. That's what the Matrix does. It weaponizes every idea. We're better to bury truth than inside something as ordinary as a video game. If Neo or whoever encounters cognitive dissonance and are close to realizing the truth of the Matrix, a therapist pops up to alleviate those anxieties. The therapist here is actually the latest version of the architect called The Analyst, played by Neil Patrick Harris. In a fabulous scene, 
The analyst tells Neo how in the latest Matrix the machines deliberately trigger human minds to keep them in a perpetual loop of fear and desire so as to make them produce more energy. He says that zero resistance is the best part and that for 99% of humanity, the definition of reality is quietly yearning for what you don't have while dreading losing what you do. The analyst is talking about our continuous desire to escape power structures while benefiting from the same structures. With just contemplating or committing inconsequential acts of revolution inside the matrix, but not making any change to material reality. People stay in their pods, happier than pigs in shit, he observes. The analyst's outlook ties in with the late British theorist Mark Fisher's ideas on capitalist realism, which is the unspoken understanding that capitalism is not just the best way possible to run the world, but we also can no longer imagine an alternative to it. Just like how both the humans and the machines in the Matrix of Directions who have entered peacetime agreed on the fact that revolutions will only cause disaster. It is a small group of neophiles who want to challenge this order, but they are no longer supported by their human leaders. The Matrix Resurrections, especially through the Analyst and the Rants of the Merovingian, suggest that the obvious conclusion for there being no alternative to the present means of production is that there are no new futures, which is another of Fisher's concerns that he addressed in the essay. The slow cancellation of the future. Fisher writes that the status of the postmodern condition in the 21st century has been buried, interfered behind a superficial frenzy of newness and perpetual movement. The jumbling up of time and the montaging of earlier eras in postmodern culture that Fisher finds has ceased to be worthy of common because it is now so prevalent that it is no longer even noticed. It's exactly how the Matrix Resurrections plays out literally with Lana Wachowski cross-cutting scenes with clips from the earlier films. But it is also how the machines in the movie are creating newer versions of the Matrix based on older ones, trapping human minds in loops. The analyst, the Merovingian and Smith 2.0 explicitly state that we have reached an ontological dead end from where it is impossible to think of anything new. As all stories have already been told, all revolutions have already happened. So then, is there any hope for a different human condition? One that does not enslave humans with work, entertainment, relentless serotonin or oxytocin boosting digital triggers? In 2006 documentary, The Pervert's Guide to Cinema, philosopher Slavo Zizek said that there is no reason for humans to want to leave the Matrix because while the Matrix is a machine for fictions, these are fictions that structure our reality. If you take away from our reality the symbolic fictions that regulate it, you lose reality itself. The analyst tells Neo the same thing, that humans don't give a shit about facts, it's all about fiction, and fiction is guided by feelings. This is just one of several moments in the entire Matrix saga that early captures the present day world. The answer then is no. Humans have no hope. Hope itself is a program among others. That the machines are cognizant of, can predict in advance and neutralize. The final scene of the Matrix Resurrections says as much. Neo and Trinity have become aware of the Matrix, but they realize there is no point in unplugging humanity. The analyst suggests that the best Neo and Trinity can do is remake the Matrix, paint the sky with rainbows, because the sheeple aren't going anywhere, as they don't want freedom or empowerment. They want to be controlled. They crave the comfort of certainty. Neo and Trinity agree and fly away. The Matrix trilogy was predicted on the belief that humans want to unplug and face reality. The last 20 years proved otherwise, which is what Lana Wachowski communicates in The Matrix Resurrections. 40 years ago, in On Nihilism, 
the final chapter of the 1981 philosophical book Simulacra and Simulation, which is referenced in the first Matrix film, Baud Rillard wrote, The universe and all of us have entered live into simulation. Turns out, we love it. How interesting is that article and the perception of that person, but not just that person, but from Lon Wachowski, from the Matrix movies, from Baud Rillard, the writer of those books. You know, it's it's very interesting to think about those teams because they actually are real. Because if you look at the original Matrix trilogy and what it predicted, it was so accurate. We don't want to leave our avatar. And the Matrix Resurrections holds that mirror up to ourselves and makes us look at ourselves and says... Do you really want to leave the world you're in right now? This avatar you've created, your Instagram, your TikTok, your Facebook, your YouTube. Do you really want to leave it? And 99% of people will say no. There is comfort in certainty, as the analyst says. People don't want to leave. They don't want to put down their phones. They have to check it the first thing in the morning when they wake up. And the Matrix is so meta. It's able to predict that 20 years ago. And now, 20 years later, with the Matrix Resurrections, it's able to hold that mirror up to everybody, including myself. I'm not perfect. I have a phone. I have social media. I make videos. But that entire article and what it thinks the Matrix is conveying is is pretty accurate to me. It, it, it gives a, a really clear picture of what Lana Wachowski and even what those books that the Matrix is based on was trying to convey, even though the author of those books did not agree with the actual Matrix movies, but I actually think it's there somewhere if you just dig a little bit deeper in it, in terms of Lana Wachowski and her sister Lily, the story of the original trilogy was to break free, was to be awoken. But do people really want that? I don't think so. Yes, there's a lot in that article and to explore, and maybe confusing at first, listening to me read it out, or go rewatch the video, or read the article for yourself the link is in the description because it has definitely opened my eyes up to a lot more avenues that the matrix resurrections was telling us of today's society but also of the future again and i find it so compelling and so interesting how these movies are able to do that and they aren't ever too far off but guys what's your thoughts on this that humanity basically has no hope to escape the matrix because people are too comfortable with their iPads, their iPhones, their computers, their Facebook, their TikTok, their Instagram, their Snapchat. They're too comfortable because they know exactly what they're getting every single time they plug in or they log on. And when they leave those platforms, they feel like they're missing out or they're not themselves or they're not the avatar that they created for themselves on an online basis because when you take all of that away who are you as a person what's your real thoughts what do you really want to say to the world what do you really want to do that's lost it really really is and many of us maybe all of us have lost that aspect of ourselves knowing what we want knowing who we want to be knowing how we feel which is such a big thing how to feel and being afraid to do it. And that's why the Matrix universe raises so many questions. But the Matrix movies can raise these questions all they want. We have to react to them. We have to answer to them. We have to change ourselves to them. Or we don't. Or we just ignore it. And we go back to our avatars that we've created. Like many people do. It's very, very interesting. But guys, what do you think of this article, of this theory, of this subjective opinion about that the Matrix Resurrection shows us that humanity will never have any hope because of the real life Matrix we are living in right now? It's definitely one to ponder, to theorize, to get into the comment section and to discuss it as always. Guys, thanks for watching. Give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for a brand new video every single day. And we've only hit the surface of what we will be diving deep into, the Matrix. More videos to come, guys. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day, night, evening, morning, wherever you are in the world. And don't forget to log off every once in a while and look up into the sky. You just might miss something that's real.